Hey, welcome back to Homegrown Country Homestead, friends. How y'all doing today? Well, today's video is going to be about my truck that I use for RV transport. And I'm going to show y'all a few things I've done to it as far as modifications. And uh, also a few things that I've had replaced on the truck that's went bad. So, uh, first of all, let me just show you the truck real quick. It's a 2017 uh, Ram 3500 four-wheel drive. It does have the 6.7 Cummins engine in it. And... Uh, I bought this truck with a little bit over 50,000 miles on it and right now I currently have about a hundred and forty two thousand miles on it So um, let me go ahead and get started here and show you a few things I've done to it One of the first things I've done uh, place these front core springs on it um, These a little bit more heavy-duty and uh, They're supposed to uh, you know be a little bit more uh i guess the heavy duty as far as you know the as far as the the weight distribution of the springs keep them settling down so much i know this set actually raised my truck in the front end of one inch and uh so i, I like that it. it did give a little bit more higher stance in the front of it and uh that's good if you're going to add like a uh a snow plow or bumper uh, guard grill guard or something like that on the front of it uh it would keep it from sagging down so much and uh let me see right here the next time place that uh like transmission cooler bypass um uh, had like a thermostatic uh valve in it and i placed that and it's just basically uh where the fluid uh it doesn't uh you know restrict the fluid flow it kind of uh, flows freely and that helps the transmission to uh, run a lot cooler so before I'd run temperatures probably 167 uh, degrees and now you know it may be running 120 30 140 degrees just driving uh, even even pulling pulling the campers now get up in the mountains, the temperatures they run on up there like 167, 170 degrees. But it's supposed to be better for the life of the transmission. So um, that's one of the modifications I did. And uh, let's come back here to the rear back here, show you. Um, next thing I did on these uh, springs right here, I put a uh, extra leak spring in here. And it gave me an inch and a half lift and uh, made a little bit stiffer back here but it has more you know load uh capacity as far as for it you know lowers it down while i put a camper on the back of it while i was doing that i went ahead and put me a set of airbags back here suspension bags that helps everything you know keep everything good and level and uh so uh that's been beneficial and I put this uh, flaps all the way across the back of it right here. Just use regular mud flaps and cut them in two. And uh, it just gives an extra uh, rock protection on them campers there, keep, keeping rocks and stuff hitting the back of the camper. And I just got this, uh, let me see, I think it's a 14,000 pound capacity uh, uh, hitch receiver right here. And uh, put that on there. And uh, in the back, back here's a Husky 26,000 pound fifth wheel. So that's what I installed in the back uh, for the fifth wheels. And so far, it's been a pretty good one. I ain't had no trouble out of it. And uh, I installed a 91 gallon RDS fuel tank and toolbox combo. And uh, I'm gonna say it holds. Um, I don't know, maybe 82, 83 gallons of diesel fuel. It won't hold that whole 93. Uh, I put normally about 82, 83, something like that. And uh, it's just got a shut off valve right there that you can manually open back and forth. But what I did, let me show you up under here. I installed a. Uh, So you can see it right there right there a 12 volt uh, on and off valve 
and that's recently on my last trip went out i'm going to be putting a new one on it, a different type and i'll do a video on that show you uh me installing a completely different type but um that uh opened up manually you can do it that way and i did that that way probably uh first three or four trips went out but i decided to go ahead and uh, uh, put a uh, switch on it that way when i'm going on the road i can just open it up fill my tank up cut it back off and then i'm good to go there on that and uh so now my tires here type tires i'm running i'm running just this uh these are semi tomo encounter all-terrain type tires and i tell you i got about 35,000 miles on these tires and you can see how thick the tread is on them um they probably still got another i don't know how much life in them but they, they got like 10 11 30 seconds of tread left on them so that's real good you know i'm real happy with these so far so if y'all need a good all-terrain tire them encounters are uh some good tires to get and uh i'll just show you inside the truck here um I took my seat out in here and because uh, I had to have a place to sleep and uh, I knew sleeping on the back seat wouldn't be comfortable so I went ahead and I took it out and um, I just put like a gel foam memory foam type mattress on it and uh, built a wooden platform right here and uh, worked out real good and I got storage all the way across the side, up underneath there I can put all my tools and supplies in here my battery and um, up under here, this truck's got a compartment on both sides, and I put like light, light bulbs, different things for maintenance in them compartments, and that works out real good. And uh, let me show you here a few things that I've done here uh, my fire extinguisher and everything. I just mounted it right up here in, uh, in front of this console here, and uh, added me a another auxiliary um 12 volt uh port right there i just did that for this last trip and got one of them down there and uh got my little swamp cooler deal in here uh, uh it works all right but it ain't it ain't worth the money i paid for it but uh, i tell you it gets hot out here and sometimes just gotta run my air condition a lot of times i don't run it unless i have to but uh i installed some of these uh sports camo covers uh, if you want some good uh seat covers are real good and heavy duty i'd recommend these they're made out of uh, real good material and uh they they last a long time but uh one thing that placed i first thing went wrong with this truck is was this ignition module right here um it actually went out probably sixty thousand miles just came out after i got home from a trip and i uh, went and cranked it up well it wouldn't crank it just uh it wouldn't do anything it wouldn't turn over anything and uh so i charged my batteries and uh actually went and bought two new batteries since they still had the original ones on it and uh still didn't crank so uh wound up i bought one of these from dealer and put it on and it fixed it so uh they they said you had uh replace more stuff like a um i can't really remember what it was another uh type deals back here on this uh, back of the uh cab of the truck back here like a radio frequency module or something like it uh but i haven't had no trouble on that part so i guess i got lucky on that but uh really didn't expect you know have to play something that quick on a, a you know something like a mission you know but uh let me show you here under the hood uh it does have a 6.7 cummins engine and um <clears throat> let me see what else have i done to it oh yeah let me, let me bring y'all back around here for show you um can't remember what miles i placed this put them put it on that but uh what it did if you look up in there you see that fuel filter you got a water separator right there then on this outside 
uh, closest to me here, you'll see an another field. Now that's not factory, that's uh, like a cat filter system I installed. It just gives extra uh, filtration for diesel fuel. And right now I'm not running a cat filter, but uh, anyway, it's uh, equivalent to it. But it just helps uh, to uh, filter out my diesel fuel. And uh, let me show you this here. And uh, this right here, is a DEF injector. This is what uh, injects your DEF fluid into your catalyst and helps clean your exhaust. I was in uh, Shane Woman and uh, my engine light came on and uh, I took it to a dealership and I have a scanner with me and it, and it read, read a code but I wasn't real familiar with it so I said I had a camper with me hooked up and I didn't have time really trying to figure it out myself so took it them they said this was what was bad and they replaced it and uh sure enough you ohm it out it's supposed to have like 11 13 ohms of resistance right here on this and mine was uh zero so it was uh it was bad and I thought about going ahead and buy an extra one of these to keep on my truck in case it ever goes bad again but uh whenever uh that's that's 70,000 miles and um uh, and i was over in getting close to butte montana and i started losing coolant and uh i pulled over and couldn't really see i could tell it looked like it's coming out of my overflow right there but i couldn't really tell you know why i couldn't send a leak on a hose or anything so i knew it was like a pressure uh, issue and uh, so i took it to the you know, local Chrysler dealership down there, Ram dealership, and checked out, and they said my head gasket uh, needed to be replaced because they had they checked the coolant uh, with a you know the tester and uh, actually had uh, exhaust in my antifreeze, you know, and on that's an indication of a head gasket being blown, and that's exactly what they said. They said a head gasket was blown. I said, well. I asked him, well, the EGR cooler. I said, well, how about that? Could not put exhaust in the, uh, you know, antifreeze and, you know, if it was leaking internally. And he said, well, it don't have that much back pressure on it, so it'd be, it wouldn't ever get into exhaust. That was their head diesel mechanic. So, I, you know, I was in a rock and hard place, kind of, between a rock and hard place, and um, I had a camper, and I needed to get it delivered to Washington. I told him, go ahead and put the head gasket on it. Well... They put it on there, and I, I left, and I guess about 80 miles down the road, my coolant light came back on. And I checked it, and it, it done, done uh, lost my coolant again. But the coolant wasn't actually pumping out at this point. It was actually, like, burning uh, through the engine itself. So I said, well, either the job they did was flawed or they misdiagnosed it. So what I did, I went ahead and went to Washington, kept antifreeze water in it, and... Um, Got back home after about over 20 gallons of antifreeze water later. Got home, I took this CGR cooler right here, this still right here. Took it loose and I actually found out it was bad. And you can see where it, uh, the coolant had been uh, burning through uh, the exhaust. And um, so that was what the problem was the whole time. And I ordered a uh, bulletproof EGR cooler and uh put it on there and i haven't had no trouble ever since then and um so in the process you know checking everything out uh you know i found different bolts and stuff loose on different things uh, my harness right here it was about to get into my uh, fan blade so i had you know zip tie some of that stuff up so i didn't really trust you know how good of a job the mechanic had done so I decided, well, he took a head gasket, you know, my head off and put the head gasket on there. So I decided to just go and uh, before I went on this last trip, I bought these exotic uh, head studs and decided to put some head studs on the engine to uh, replace the original bolts because he put the original ones back in it. They wasn't replaced. And I wasn't really sure, you know, if he took the time to measure and make sure they were still good. But uh, when I took everything loose, everything was tied on it. So, uh, fortunately, you know, I don't think I got any kind of damage, you know, with that new head gasket. Everything seems to be good. I just went on this last trip and 
put 5,000 miles on them uh, head studs and everything's working good. Uh, so I guess I'll be all right on that. But uh, anyway, so far this truck's been a, a good truck. Um, the only problem I've had out of it was the uh, DAF system and the uh, EGR system, uh, the EGR cooler back here. Other than that, uh, the motors ran good. Uh, I adjust my valves while I was in there. Uh, uh, they recommend about 150,000 miles on them, and uh, they wasn't really off anything, but uh, they, they had just a little bit of clearance issues. But I went ahead and redid the valve uh, check on it, readjusted all of them, and uh, so far I've been uh, happy, you know, with the truck as far as you know using it for RV transporting. Um, it does have the regular 68 RFE transmission. You can see the dipstick on this uh, passenger side over here. It don't have that heavy duty transmission. I wish it did, but so far, like I keep all my fluids changed in it, um, like the diff, uh, differential fluids. I've changed them a couple times. Um, transmission fluid a couple times. I tried to do transmission about 60,000, about 60,000 miles. I changed everything when I first got the truck. And uh, I just kind of go through the transfer case fluid, changed it out, and because uh, you know maintenance that's that's, that's the main thing uh, on these trucks, taking care of the maintenance and everything to help you uh, uh, keep keep the truck on the road there. But uh, just want to share a little bit of information here today on my truck and what what kind of uh, truck I've been using for RV transporting. And uh, like I say, I appreciate all y'all watching the videos. And if y'all got any questions, or anything, just ask me a question there. If I can answer, I sure enough try to uh, answer it for you and help you out there any way I can. There, uh, like I say, I've only been doing SRV transporting for about uh, I guess about about nine months now, nine ten months. So uh, fairly new at it, and uh, so far it's been a pretty good job for me. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it, it takes you away from home. Uh, you know sometimes you know more longer than i want to be away but other than that you know uh, it's a pretty good job and everything uh, but as always friends from my family to yours y'all have a blessed day and we'll see y'all later bye, -bye.